Blood Money, Part 3, Dirty Pop, a boy band scam. After all of these forged checks, money missing, investors, they want revenge on Lou. Lou has been on the run while the feds are doing a sweep. And well, everyone's looking for the money that they put into the pot. And Lou Pearlman is nowhere to be found, but he's going to get caught. They're going to serve him for the largest Ponzi scheme in history, over 30 years and $500 million. Now, before we jump into this and we break down part three of Dirty Pop, if you like this kind of content, docu-series, and you want me to do more, comment down below. Then hit your subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. And hey, I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers, so I appreciate each and every one of you. But let's jump into it. This is Dirty Pop, part three of Boy Band Scam, Blood Money. What they do is take us two years before Frankie's suicide. And we're at who? Of course, Lou Pearlman's 50th birthday party. He has all the celebrities there. Hulk Hogan, of course, he has his own groups performing. Lou, he's a showsman. Lou, he's a businessman, from what we all assume. So two years prior to all of this happening, everyone was looking at Lou like this is the man you want to be around, and this is who you want to invest in. We see earlier interviews of Lou, and they're asking about the hysteria that comes behind boy bands, and will this era ever stop? And he says, as long as the Lord is still making girls, there's always going to be boy bands. They always want to see some attractive men up there singing to them. So he's right about that. It's even the same thing to now. People love artists. It's just the way it is. And Lou capitalized off of that. Lou, remember, two years before everything happened, he's on the move trying to make the next big thing. And he had a show called Big in America where he was trying to put together a group in Europe and then bring them back to America. Basically the same blueprint and then slingshot them into stardom. But it turns out no one's going for this gimmick anymore, especially from Lou after everything that they're hearing from the Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, what they were watching on TV with Old Town. It just wasn't working anymore. Now we get into the nitty gritty. And this woman named Helen, she's into finances. And she ends up getting a call from someone asking, hey, what do you know about this investor, Lou Pearlman of Transcontinental Airlines? What does he actually do? Where does his money come from? And of course, once you get a tip like this, and she's a personal finance editor, she's going to do a deep dive. She's going to start inquiring. And remember, this is two years prior to the raid on Lou Perlman's house, mansions, and warehouse. So it just takes a little connecting the dots from a person here to an individual there, and you'll start to figure things out. Now, they asked Helen about this employee investment savings account. To start an employee investment account, just contact our company's account supervisor. We look forward to serving you. Now, the yield on this was 9.08%, which is higher than anyone. You're not going to get that much back, especially not on no yield or no interest. And when he sent out this, he was telling people that it was FDIC, federally insured for 100000 And then on top of that investment, 100000 from the Bank of Lloyd in London. So Helen is reading this, and she does finances nonstop. And this doesn't even make sense. I'm looking at it now as an adult. And I know if it's too good to be true, then it's not true. Now, Helen, she started to write about this employee investment. And then people started wanting to get their money out of this employee investment, but they couldn't. It was locked up. Cheney, his lawyer, he's still trying to get his $16 million. He said Lou Perlman paid them one and a half million, but went on about his life and never paid the other $14.5 million. So he's on the case now. And this is even before the feds are involved. At this time, investors are coming around. They said that they were stealing from the studios, stealing from the mansion, trying to get anything of value to get their money back. They even said some shady investors came around. But if you remember in part one, they said a lot of the investors that Lou was into it with, they were part of the mob. They had connections to the mob. So it's all starting to make sense. And the Ponzi scheme is starting to unravel. You take from Paul to pay Peter. Well, when there's no more money coming in, everyone's going to want their money back. Everyone was losing money on this. Frankie's mother lost money on it. Every associate around Lou 
they probably lost money on it, even though they won't speak on it. They'd rather not. But now you're starting to see why Frankie was feeling the way he was before he unalived himself. He's looking at Lou Pearlman like you portrayed me. You brought me in as like a family member. You told my family that we could invest in you. We thought we could trust you. Lou Pearlman was a piece of shit. And you know what I'm trying to say. Well, Lou, he had a nice space downtown Florida. He talked about the plaza. Well, he seen Frankie. They got on the elevator. He hugged him and said, hey, I'll be back. I'm going on vacation. A couple of days later, the feds raided the place. So Lou was in his jet flying around the world. He was on the run from the feds, the FBI, the IRS. Everyone was looking for Lou. And he left everyone high and dry in the state. The feds said that Lou had been on the run for about six weeks. Now everyone's asking his associates, hey, where's Lou at? And they're making it seem like Lou has all this money. So he's flying around the world, going to off seas, offshore accounts, got lock boxes. He's going to get the money, come back and make everything right. That's because Lou had everyone believing that he was really richer than what he was. But we found out he owed the record labels. He was getting money from all these investors and he was blowing it faster than he was getting it. Lou was making moves, meeting up with investors because Everyone didn't have this news. It wasn't worldwide as if it is now where it could spread like a wildfire. They went from Berlin to Spain to Panama, but they ended up in Bali. Now, what do we know about Bali? There's no extradition over there. So Lou know what he was doing. He was going to get whatever little bit of money he could from these last investors. And it looked like he was going to probably try to spend the last of his days in Bali because they wouldn't send him back to the States. Investors are all coming out talking about their experience with Lou Pearlman and his little investment. Well, they said that they were FDIC insured and they would give money back by the London banks also. The only problem is they would pour their life savings into it, but the statements wouldn't come back from the bank. They would come back from transcontinental airlines. Well, if I'm investing into a savings plan, it's going to be through a bank because they're FDIC insured. Transcontinental, wait a minute, they're not insured for anything. The scam was right in front of everybody. We keep talking about Transcontinental Airlines, but no one ever seen any plans. And allegedly, he owned 50 planes that he rented out to celebrities, but no one's ever seen a plane. No one's ever went to a hangar where Lou was like, hey, this is my plane. So it's been there, it's just been a facade. But when perception is reality, if you see planes on his desk, you're going to assume. Well, he has all these planes. He must be an owner of a couple of planes. You wouldn't just have these laying around. Now we get into the Ponzi scheme. We've seen the scam, and now we're going to go into the details. From private investors, they said Lou made about $317 million from private investors. Then there was a $200 million from the bank frauds. Now, he would go get a loan for 100000 from this bank, but then get a $250,000 loan from the next bank. Pay that 100000 back out of, out of the bank that he just got 200000 from, and then he will still have 100000 And as you can see, this will start ranking up into the millions because the next time you borrow, it might be $500,000 from the bank. You keep 300000 you pay off that 200000 Now you got to go to a million to pay that 500000 off and keep you 500000 So Lou was in over his head. While Lou is in Bali, one of the members of Old Town is still with him. And he's looking at the news and he's seeing everything that's going on back in the state. And out of nowhere, Lou comes over to him and says, hey, does this look real? Does this look legit to you? And we know that Lou has been forging things since the 80s when he forged the driver's permit. He forges a German savings bank. And it's a stamp that he can probably put on different types of envelopes put this on the seal of letters that he's going to be sending out to make it seem like, hey, Lou has this much money in the bank. He's good for a loan up to a million dollars, two million dollars. Well, Lou, being the con man that he is, he never stops. And he sent this off by fax to Bank of America and got a million dollar loan. Date of transaction, June 12, 27. Bank wire, one million dollars. Bank of America, Transcontinental, INC. This man Lou was a demon. 
Well, this didn't go on for long because he was in Indonesia and he got he got got. Perlman turns 53 on lockdown in Guam. Lou Perlman, right, is escorted to a van in Yigo, Guam on Friday. He was found Thursday in Indonesia and handed to the FBI. There was a lady by the name of Miss Dow, and she ended up trying to sue Lou Perlman and transcontinental talent because of his modeling agency that he had. But eventually, it was shut down. The case into Lou Perlman, they just threw it out, and they made her resign from her job. Now, this gentleman is saying that's because Lou potentially had some high-ranking officials, some connections, but that's as far as he's going to go because he doesn't want to allude to maybe Lou paid some people off to get this case dismissed. Now, once Lou is locked up, people are thinking that Lou is about to be able to get out of here quick, fast, and in a hurry. Well, it doesn't happen that way. The feds really got him this time. But we get introduced to this guy named Peter. And if you look at Peter, you might think that Peter has a couple of connections with the mob. But at the time that he met Lou Pearlman in 2000, they were about to do the deal to get that plaza, Church Street. Well, he ended up getting arrested for a RICO, bank fraud, money wiring. So you know what kind of character this is. But that ties back to part one, showing that Lou was always mixed up with the wrong type of investors. While Lou was in prison, he started coming up with his own storyline, his fictional life that he was living. But one thing he told Peter was he told in Peter in the Cayman Islands, he had two to three billion dollars that no one would ever be able to get their hands on. But we know that Lou is a kind man. So hearing this, by this part three, we can't believe anything that Lou is saying. And criminals lie to criminals. They always want to lead you on to make you believe one thing just so they could do something behind your back. It's like the magician says, the hand is quicker than the eye. Lou is in prison wilding out. He's over here sending people letters. He has a picture that he drew of the Orange County prison with a helicopter on top of it with a ladder like he's about to escape. This is his last Christmas in here. He's going to get out. Come on, Lou. You could barely move around on your own. You had to get a nurse. You definitely aren't going to be able to climb up this ladder and escape. The moment you climb that ladder and the helicopter starts to lift off, you're going to lose your grip and it's over with. Lou Perlman ends up passing away in prison. The coroner is getting worried no one's going to claim the body. They're trying to get the body back up to New York, but none of his family members are claiming him. Lou disgraced everyone, and no one wanted anything to do with relocating his body back to New York City. Well, the Backstreet Boys, they went on their tour in 2022. NSYNC did theirs in 2023. They're continuing on their legacies. Lou Pearlman is a part of their legacy. Even though we got to get rid of him because of what he did, he did help them out and get them started. If he just didn't screw them over, he probably could have been a legitimate person in music history. But unfortunately, he's a scam artist. Of the roughly $500 million Lou Pearlman stole, only about $10 million has been recovered from his accounts, assets to date. Nearly 2,000 individuals and families invested with Perlman over more than 30 years. It was the longest running Ponzi scheme in American history. All right, there you go. Our three part series of Dirty Pop, a boy band scam. Out of all of this, I know I asked you at the end of part two, would you sign up under Lou Perlman? Knowing all of this, definitely not. But it is an opportunity that you may have never received. <sighs> Crazy story, man. Crazy story. But let me know what you think about this. I'm Modi J. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if there are more docu-series you want me to go through and give recaps of and try to break down, then just let me know. Comment below because I'm open to everything. Just let me know. I'm Modi J. We're on that road to 50,000 subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.